Okay, so we're we're gone past ten o'clock. So uh, thank you, everybody, for for joining this morning um, for our webinar about uh, ensuring your remote contact centre is secure, compliant, and agile. My name's Craig. I'm the uh, marketing director here at Opus. I'm joined today by Andrew and Romka from um, Cirrus Response, and also on the call we've got Julia, who is monitoring questions. If you do want to pop anything into the uh, Q&A box, please do so, and we'll we'll pick that up uh, as we go through, or at the end when we we go to questions. I wanted to um, just touch on 2020 and beyond. It's hard to ignore um, what has uh, impacted many of us this year. Uh, the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic um, and what it has done is it's uh, you know in the, with the lockdowns and so on it's it's created a massive shift not just to home working but um, a change in, in the way many uh, customers are looking to contact uh, companies um, but according to analysts McKinsey and company, um, many executives are looking to, uh, you know, beyond COVID, if we can actually imagine a, such a time, um, that there there will be um, an interest in people working from home uh, way beyond the um, the COVID nineteen situation, and and that number increases uh, more if you're in the technology space. Private equity firm Leone uh, saying from their analysts from their analysis that a third of businesses lack the technical infrastructure to manage long term remote working, which is uh, one of the reasons why we put on the uh, the webinar today. Um, and as far as we're concerned, there are three considerations for effective home working. Um, agility, security and compliance, which we're talking about today, uh, and then also real time visibility and actionable insights, looking at the um, employee experience as well as the customer experience and operational efficiencies and true omni channel, which uh, we will covering in uh, later webinars. For those of you that uh, aren't familiar with Opus, uh, we are an end to end technology provider. Uh, we've got a telecoms technology and, and digital divisions, so we cover communications, collaboration, customer experience and so on. We've got a, an IT division that uh, provides all the Microsoft cloud services and support and a managed print solutions uh, division as well. Um, we are independent and privately owned, which is uh, becoming increasingly rare in today's world, with many of our competitors being um, swallowed up by investors. Uh, it means that we are in control of our own destiny and can recruit best, the best staff and focus on um, customer service rather than shareholder returns. Uh, we've been operating for almost 29 years now. Uh, we're an en engineering led organization and we offer a personalized lifetime account management. So uh, the guys that you deal with uh, when you first get introduced to Opus uh, is the account managers that uh, main maintain the relationship with you throughout your partnership with with Opus. We partner with uh, Cirrus Response at the, at the highest level uh, and I'll talk more about Cirrus in a moment. Um, and there's a single support number for all of the services that we provide. Um, we guarantee satisfaction, which is backed by financial penalties and senior management involvement um, where needed. Uh, and testament to this is the fact that we publish contact numbers on our website that uh, for escalations up to the owner and CEO of our of our business. We support about 1500 public and private sector customers nationwide. One of our core values is, is only partnering with best of breed uh, technology providers um, and we specialize in a, in a small but carefully selected group of, uh, of solution providers of which um, Cirrus are one. Uh, and Cirrus response are a strategic contact center partner for us. Um, the, the, the contact center solutions perfectly complement the portfolio of, of unified communications solutions that we offer. They do specialize in the contact center market, so you're absolutely getting best breed technology for contact centers. They're agile, they're not afraid to be uh, to tackle leading edge uh, technology requirements. They offer a truly omni channel solution and the, the reliability and security is, is second to none. Um, 
they absolutely fit uh, the area of market that we support, which is mid market and, and public sector, and uh, they focus very much on, on customer success. They're interested in each customer, not just the technology. Uh, and testament to that is that we've got uh, a customer success manager, Andrew Tucker, that uh, I'm going to hand over to now at Cirrus. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Craig, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Opus webinar on security, agility and compliance entitled Location, Location, Location. Ensure your remote contact centre is secure, compliant and agile. Um, my name is Andrew Tucker. I work in Cirrus as a customer success manager, so I help support partners and live accounts with deployments, helping them maximise um, and get full use out of the deployment and the systems that we have in life so that they can really leverage their investment and strive for success when it comes to using our CCAS provided solutions. And I'm here today to help support and partner with Opus to just bring a little bit of calm into what has been a particularly turbulent and challenging eight months. And in order to do that, we decided when we were talking with Opus that we would tackle probably one of the world's most boring subjects for a webinar, which is security and compliance. So hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen, take a slug of coffee and let's get going. So Craig, could we have the first slide, please? Now, we're going to look very briefly at what makes effective remote working. We're going to look at the state of play, state of union, what is going on out there in the contact centre world. And then, of course, we're going to address reliability, security and compliance. Grab that bull by the horns full on. We'll then briefly look at the cloud based strategy that Cirrus adopts when it comes to deploying and migrating businesses and supporting Opus with customers to migrate businesses into the cloud. And then hopefully we'll have a live Q&A session and that will then wrap our wrap our session up. Um, with some contact us details to further the engagement. So next slide, please, Craig. What's going on out there? OK, so it's been a turbulent eight months. We're in COVID version 2.0. And I'd like to try and summarise, if you like, what our customers have been telling us and what our partners have been telling us are the really pressing themes out in the market and what pressures their businesses have been under in this global pandemic. First off, let's start with disaster recovery. Back in February and March, when we were told to lock down, a lot of businesses were confronted with the fact that the disaster recovery models weren't really capable of responding to a global pandemic. The typical scenario of my site in Guildford has now shut down, so I'm going to move everybody to Slough. Well, that really didn't work. We were told to go and work remotely. And businesses were faced with the challenge that they didn't have disaster recovery models, which allowed them to do that. So there was a little bit of a panic as people scrabbled around to try and enable truly remote working at the time. Some businesses who were already accessing and using cloud based services fared a lot better than others who had. Moving on to the second point, truly remote working and legacy infrastructure. Clients who had traditional large pieces of on premise kit often struggle to be able to give the flexibility required to support a truly remote workforce. So you had disaster recovery models, not factoring in the global pandemic. Plus, you had a truly remote workforce placing enormous stress on or pressure on traditional infrastructure, servers and old school on prem tech. Now, flip it around to the consumer, citizens, public sector, private sector. People now working from home were putting an enormous amount of pressure on businesses who have contact centres in order to be able to provide them reassurance. What's going on with my refund? What do I have to do about my travel plans? What happens if, what happens if, is businesses still going? Customers were asking a lot of questions and putting a tremendous amount of strain on contact centres. Customers wanted reassurance. They wanted answers. They wanted information. If it were no more than just reassurance and to calm them down to let them know that business was proceeding as usual. So there was a huge spike in demand and that 
put the traditional channel of voice under enormous pressure. Like it or loathe it, voice as a channel is still one of the most principally used ways of accessing a contact centre and accessing services of a business. It's estimated that between 60 and 70 percent of all contact centre demand comes through the channel of voice and it was put under phenomenal pressure. The efficiencies that businesses would have by running a contact centre from a large room with the oversight that you would get by having supervisors able to walk over and look over the shoulder of an agent and say, ah, I can see things are really going south at the moment. Call queues are mounting, service levels are falling. Could you please jump off this, jump off your admin and get onto the phone? Those traditional efficiencies that you would have in a traditional contact center didn't apply. Voice was under pressure. Hold times went up, queue times went through the roof, service levels dropped. So it really started to show a huge amount of strain. It was challenging and difficult. And then you factor in workforce management and modeling. So workforce management teams were put under enormous pressure because the historical models weren't able to accurately account for the change in forecast demand. Agents working from home now had the added element of childcare strains, as one example, meaning you had an awful lot of split shifts which were introduced. Then customers calling demand changed. You had a large section of the country's workforce either put on furlough or temporary leave. And so they didn't need to call you at nine o'clock in the morning. They could call you at 11. So call arrival patterns shifted. And then the patterns and shift patterns of people who then supported that within business, they shifted too. So you combine it all together. Feedback we're getting was it was incredibly challenging and there were different challenges for different sex and sections of the industry. But the majority of businesses that we talked to said this is a struggle. And when it came to looking at on-premise kit, it was immediately apparent that they couldn't adapt and respond quickly. Next slide, please. Well, let's look at the financial costs of not adapting. Now, this slide is actually from pre-COVID and it examines, because everybody needs a stat in a webinar, this slide examines the estimated costs of inefficiencies from businesses not adapting and taking on new technology. Just imagine siloed systems where you're jumping from one system to another to another in order to be able to answer a customer query. The amount of inefficiency and actual process lag that businesses had baked in through not adapting and adopting new technologies are costing industries what is estimated to be 2.1 billion pounds annually. That's within the contact centre sector. There are 1,100 contact centres in the United Kingdom. Those contact centres are estimated to employ between four and six percent of the adult UK working population. This is a huge industry and its inefficiencies are costing businesses a large amount of money. So it's actually impacting bottom line. So I'm painting a pretty grim picture and I'm sorry if on a Thursday morning you're hearing, oh, pandemic, oh, my infrastructure's not working and it all sounds pretty grim. But we were getting some pretty hectic feedback from our clients and our partners to say, ah, we need to do something and we need to try and support. So let's go to the next slide and really encapsulate, if we possibly can, what we were being asked to help and provide. So. Organisations were trying to offer solutions and services out for their contact centres using systems that allowed them to do true home working. Then we were allowed to go back into the office, a little bit of social distancing. So in we went back into the office. You need to be able to have a system that allowed you the flexibility, the fluidity and the agility to move your workforce back. And then COVID version two came, we had to flow back in to working from home again. So businesses have been asking for truly agile, flexible systems that allow their agents to plug in from anywhere. They need to be geographically agnostic. 
And that is really the headline that we're looking at when it comes to working with a cloud-based solution. So I can stand here and tell you all day long, yes, just plug in from anywhere. It doesn't really matter. You can have your customers serviced from your remote workers. They could be on a beach in Spain. They could be on a caravan site down in Dorset. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have a stable and solid interconnection, you can work from anywhere. And there was this giddy sigh of excitement, collective relief up and down the country when they said, yes, let's go to the cloud. They've got all of the answers. It's absolutely perfect for what we want to do. So next slide, please. Into the mix, we need to introduce Lee. Lee is sitting down because Lee is taking this seriously. Now, Lee works in businesses up and down the country. Small to medium enterprises and large enterprises all have Lee or a version of Lee. Lee looks after your information, technology and compliance, documentation, accreditation, certification. He is the member of your business and your team who makes sure your systems are compliant. If you don't keep Lee happy, you don't progress. So we can talk agility, flexibility, we can talk remote working, we can talk omni-channel, we can talk digital, we can get giddy with excitement about all of this stuff. But unless we actually address Lee's concerns as a business, methodically and carefully, we're not going to pass go. Now, Lee may be a particularly pedantic and very, very difficult person to try and keep happy, but actually Lee does like to take risks. In his spare time, he races his Ford Focus ST around a racetrack. Yeah, he tunes it and he's actually got a bit of a devil may care attitude outside of business. But when it comes to your information, your customers and your data, next slide please, the list of questions that we and Opus need to be able to answer is legion. We cannot pass go as a business, as a service provider, unless we're able to address availability, GDPR compliance. What is your encryption trans in transit and at rest standards? What's your audit trail? Can you document your denial of attack? Password protocol, please. What is your data ownership? Do you do role based access? What about data, data replication, data segregation? Do you have authentic, authentic, oh, I can't even say it. What's your patching protocol? Audit, data security, PCI compliance, the list goes on. We at Cirrus understand that these concerns are real. Now, one thing that we don't do at Cirrus is we don't pick and choose who we offer all of our audit and security and compliance accreditation to. Every single customer that we have and every single customer that we service gets the same level of security and data and compliance, full, robust, enterprise grade solutions, regardless of the size of your business. We couldn't exist. Opus wouldn't trade with us. Opus wouldn't be a partner unless we had addressed these challenges and were able to show that we are best in breed and we can tick all of these boxes. Lee is the designated driver at a party full of agile, flexible workers. He is necessary, and that's why we're addressing these concerns in the beginning. I told you this would be dull, ladies and gentlemen, but let Lee do his work so we can get those questions answered, get those concerns out of the way, and then we can move on and address the real meaty conversations around outcomes. What are you doing for your customers? How do you protect the vulnerable? What are you doing for your VIPs? What do you want the customer experience to look like? The foundations need to be solid first. Next slide, please. So, Cirrus, we are reliable. We operate a UK-based triple live environment. Live, live, live. All of the data is taken across our network concurrently through three data centers. Those three data centers, that means you have complete, robust backup, 
reliability. If we want to do maintenance, we can take a data center out of action. You still have two. And two, ladies and gentlemen, is what our next best competitor in the cloud uses as their foundation for reliability. So we're already ahead. We're leading the pack when it comes to uptime and reliability. We have an RTO and an RPO of 60 seconds or less. Nobody in the industry does that. We can spool you back up and bring your data point back guaranteed to 60 seconds or less. I paused because that is hugely important and powerful for your uptime and your reliability statistics. Our data centers are UK based. All of our development is UK based and our support services are UK based. And we have the most reliable CCAS service in Europe. Incredibly boring, but incredibly powerful. It is reliable. You can plug it in and it just works. Next slide, please. It's secure. Accreditation, ISO 27001, ISO 9001, ISO 14001. You want to talk encryption, AES standard 256, data in transit, TLS 1.2, and then cyber security plus. You cannot get in to the network. This is an interesting narrative. Lee is used to having the keys to the kingdom. Now, we have taken on all of the data security obligations. We have taken on the data encryption obligations, and we are providing the services, which means we have to demonstrate that we have the compliance and that we are secure. These are conversations we are having with Lee to make sure that he's happy. And of course, we have full GDPR compliance. The cloud is secure. We as a business were born in the cloud. We've evolved in the cloud. We don't know on-prem. Next slide, please. Once we've got accreditation out of the way, security out of the way, reliability out of the way, let's now talk a little bit about payment. PCI, that's covered, DSS level one. Do you want automated payment services via IVR? Yes, we can provide that, that's fine. Do you want agent assist payment services to be able to talk customers through that payment process and help either close the sale or assist the more elderly or the vulnerable so that they don't get confused and lost in a process and an automated system? Or do you want to do it fully digital? and send out links either via SMS, via web chat, or via Facebook Messenger. We have all bases covered, and of course, we can offer this out because of the reliability, because of our accreditation, and because of the security. Next slide, please. Now, risk. How many people would realistically wake up in the middle of a global pandemic and say, I am going to replace my entire contact center operation. Okay, believe it or not, there are some businesses that are doing that. And we have customers who are mid project in flight, which have started during the pandemic and are progressing during the pandemic and will go live in the pandemic. There are businesses doing that because they've decided that it is time to shift. But that is quite a big movement, taking root and branch, everything, replacing it, rip up the drains, let's put something in new. Rip and replace can be quite a daunting approach in the best of times, but it can be doubly daunting in the middle of a pandemic. So what are your options? You can rip everything out and start again, or you can keep your existing core infrastructure, sweat your assets, and then overlay modules from Cirrus so that you can supplement your channels, that you can take on cloud-based compatible solutions without having to remove the network value and take your solutions and, and throw them away. So we're offering options. We're offering a way of deployment which allows businesses to assess the risk and mitigate it by taking phases, offering out channels, and of course, 
you have full channel flexibility, scalability, and agility. We're truly omni-channel. So yes, there is voice, but of course you have all of the digital offerings. We have the granddaddy of the digital channels. We have email that can be layered over to give you state-of-the-art omni-channel functionality, single view of customer, single inbox. You have complete visibility rather than working out of a shared system. Email, that's a channel, just take that. You can take messaging licenses from us, which will give you the full digital messaging approach that you could try to see whether or not the business enjoys the experience because we know going back to the original slide that I mentioned at the beginning customers want reassurance customers are asking for contact and customers are asking for you to respond so if voice isn't cutting it you can add digital channels securely and you can add digital channels in a measured way so the approach and the options that you have through opus and through Cirrus are rip and replace, overlay, or try and then adapt flexibly. So these are conversations that we can have now that we've addressed the security and the compliance. So what is our strategy? Next slide, please, if you don't mind, Craig. Having those difficult conversations, making sure that Lee is appeased and kept happy means that we can then focus on outcomes. The technology shouldn't dominate the conversation as far as we're concerned because the technology works. We have the case studies to back it up and we want to make sure that the businesses we're engaged with understand that we're here to support them with outcomes. So what are you doing to protect the vulnerable? What is your strategy for your VI customers, VIP customers? How are you actually addressing this second wave of pandemic? Once we can really get to the nitty gritty of the strategic conversations and know what your goals are, we can then approach a cloud-based migration, whether that be an overlay or a rip and replace, or an agile, flexible deployment of digital channels. And we can start to maximize the opportunities that you have by using our technology to harness the power of your existing UC, integrate with your CRMs and your backend processes and your data systems so that we can drive powerful, powerful intelligent routing and automation. And then, of course, the way that we train is truly remote. We at Cirrus employ a train the trainer approach. So we empower the people who are using the platform and we empower the leads of your world to master the domain so that you can actually maximize the systems for yourselves. We do this in small batch approaches. Everything is recorded in archives. So you have it to go back to because every deployment that we do is tailored. We don't just do off the shelf. No, absolutely not. We need to understand your business and we need to understand your people. That way we can guarantee that the deployment will be successful. Then we can look at adaptable, flexible reporting, MI feeds. Do we push you the data so that you can manipulate it yourself in Power BI? Or do you rely on our legion of tools and dashboards to provide instant updates and access back into your marketing department and the other stakeholders within your business who are keen to see how this is progressing? And then long term, once you're in the relationship, everything is live and you are mature as a customer, the success program that we have partnering with Opus guarantees that you can maximize your OPEX model assets better and show clear ROI to the business. And this is the approach that we take. And of course, it's underpinned because it is secure and compliant by our cybersecurity plus certification, ISO 27001, 9001, 14001, and you know that we're fully GDPR compliant, and we can start talking about payments and PCI. So overall, our experience has told us with deployments, taking it carefully, taking it measured, and understanding the concerns that businesses have will drive success, not only for ourselves, but for our partner Opus, and then ultimately to the businesses who use our services. Now, I know I've rattled on and I've thrown a lot of numbers and a lot of stats out there, but I think I'm going to keep quiet because I believe, Craig, that we might have some questions. Yes, thank you, Andrew. Uh, obviously, a lot, uh, 
lot to, lot covered there, so appreciate that. Um, I can see we've got a, a couple of questions coming in. Um, one being, how quickly can these services be deployed? I don't know if that's for yourself or, or Romka. Um, I can take that actually. Yes, so um, we've talked around um, the, the concepts of rip and replace or agile flexible deployments. Um, some of the deployments that we're currently engaged in are quite large scale and of course are adopting not only voice but full messaging and full omni-channel capability as well. Those deployments tend to take longer because when we talk about a phased approach you're dealing with multiple moving parts and different aspects of technology that we need to bring into a single platform. So those deployments can take longer. Typically, we ask for a lead in time of 10 days and a window of deployment of approximately a month for a smaller deployment that can extend up to six weeks for something larger. But rather than having a cookie cutter approach to this, that's all about initial engagement with the project teams to understand timescales, your internal resource, and then adjust accordingly so that we can match what available bandwidth a business has to be able to do a project against their demands and then we'll temper that with some realistic expectations. Okay, thank you. Um, there's one about uh, the retention policy on call recordings and where are they stored? Okay, um, that's, a, that's actually quite topical because uh, that's a Lee question. Yes, he always pops in. So um, retention policy. Retention policy is what you want the retention policy to be. We are able to store calls um, and data for as long as businesses want us to. Um, I know that we have some businesses who are storing all of their call data, for example, for the lifetime of the contract and beyond. But ultimately, it's about flexibility for businesses. Um, we are engaged with businesses who ask us to offload an SFTP out all of the data from us. So we're not the data holders or data keepers. And then we'll put that into a site that they nominate, which they then hold and they, uh, they then manipulate. So the choices are basically businesses. And that's something that we decide and something that is agreed upon at early stages within projects. Do you want us to keep it? or do you want to keep it? And of course, the commercials around that are discussed um, at early stage so that you can assess the viability of the different solutions. But again, flexible options, they're there depending on what the business wants to do. Okay, so we can we can basically do what uh, whatever is required there. Um, there's a question in uh, from Danny. You spoke about a 60 second RTO. Is that between DCs and no, and do existing calls stroke digital channels drop during that period? So RTO recovery time objective is to make sure that you're back online and that's where the RPO is. So um, if I'm reading that right, let's say that we have um, that there is a data outage and um, we will be back online within 60 seconds. So that 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 means if there's a call in flight, we may lose that call. OK, so there is a risk that actual active call traffic could be lost if there is an outage that has to be clear. It's not we're saying everything is guaranteed to be there, but the RP or the recovery point time means that nothing beyond 60 seconds, uh, nothing is everything is backed up to that 60 second point or more. So when you go back to the configuration 60 seconds before any changes that you've made on the platform or any archived data or anything that happened before that outage is actually there for you to revert back to. So that's your window. I don't know whether or not that's answered your question, but they go in tandem recovery time, spool you back up within 60 seconds and recovery point back to no later than 60 seconds. The two go in tandem to make sure that you've still got fresh data. But I have to be clear, that's not to say you won't lose contacts. If there is an outage, for example, cause in flight, they may disappear. But going back 60 seconds or more, um, sorry, within that 60 second window, we can recover and bring you back on back online in time. 60 seconds is a long time when you're in a contact center waiting, but believe me, compared to 15 minute outages, I remember personally, I had an outage of four hours in a contact center. Four hours felt like 30 years when we had nothing coming in. And of course, all of my backups were 24 hours old. So the flexibility a 60 second window gives you is uh, is refreshing. That seems to have answered the, the question. Thanks there for the uh, for the feedback. Um, and there was another question about um, how would you recommend deploying like all the services at once or in a, in a phased approach? Um, so that 
<laughs> we're, we talk about sort of risk adverse. We as a business, Cirrus, um, we are risk adverse. We would recommend a phased approach. So go with voice first because um, that's often one of the most complex pieces to move over um, because it is so entrenched in a on-prem world and we have to build out the IVRs and the contact map and make sure the journeys were robust and are tested fully. So rather than doing everything in a single hit, we would recommend a phased approach. Um, we're in flight with a business at the moment, which then does voice first, then we've migrated email, then we've gone on to the digital channels and our final phase is social. So we can really make it phased or we can do voice and then digital. But again, it's discussing and establishing the time frame which is suitable for you. We don't recommend doing everything in one. We don't. It is often that is just too big of a piece of the pie to sort of bite off at a single single moment in a single bite. But um, if a business pushes us to do the whole thing, boom, we'll do it. Phased Brilliant. is best as far as we're concerned. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Welcome. I think that's about it on the questions. So um, just to, to clarify some next steps. So we will send out a copy of the slides uh, for everybody that's that's joined today and we will ask for feedback on this webinar um, and uh, look for anything else that you'd like us to cover. As I say, we've got a couple of webinars coming up. If you have been affected by anything you've heard today and, and would like some help now, uh, by all means, um, contact your account manager or I think most of you have had uh, an email from myself so just pop a reply and I'll get somebody to to contact you and follow up but uh, book a discovery day with ourselves and Cirrus and uh, we, we appreciate that every one of your um, situations is, is unique and uh, you know it's about us understanding what you're trying to do and then uh, we can discuss how to to help you. There are a couple of things to look for uh, coming from Opus. We're, we're about to publish a guide uh, on five ways to adapt your business communications for 2021 and beyond. So there's been quite a, a change for a lot of businesses this year and the way they operate. So we've got a guide coming out uh, very shortly and uh, we will be sending out information about our, our second webinar, which is being held on the 21st of January. Um, a term that's becoming more common now is, is about employee experience, not just customer experience and how that uh, employee experience feeds uh, customer experience. Uh, and then we've got a third webinar about operational efficiency and true omni-channel um, that uh, we will confirm the data on shortly. So thank you everybody for attending. Um, if you do want to get in touch uh, and uh, you need a, a number or an email or website, there we are. But um, thank you very much everybody for attending and uh, we'll end it there. Thank you.